What do you want? I've brought you a supper. It's about time. I'm hungry. You don't look hungry, Mr. Bokos. My name is Janoshik. I like Karl Bokos better. The Gestapo is paying 50,000 crowns for him, dead or alive. Shh. You talk too much. Foundry. The fool dumped the hot steel on those German officers. If he'd seen that first, he never would have done it. It's almost like bread. Official orders to associate with Czech women. A girl like that, Glazenov, cannot be all Czech. Of course not. She must have German blood. As a matter of fact, she looks very much like the picture you showed me of your fiance. Eisner, I begged you never to mention Gratian's name to me again. <laughs> Father, I'm afraid we are going to be honored again. Lieutenant Marshman, 403rd Infantry. Lieutenant Eisner, the same. My name is Preisinger, Otto Preisinger. This is my daughter, Milada. A very old friend of mine, Dr. Wallerstein. And Jan Pavel, my daughter's fiancé. Will you join us? Uh, waiter, show these gentlemen the wine list. Yes, sir. I drink too much. Mm. If I were in your place, Lieutenant, I would get drunk every day, too. Hey, you don't know what I'm suffering. Nobody knows. In our village, there was an old man who always carried a large sack. What's in that sack, we'd ask him. And always he'd answer, ah, all the troubles in the world. You'll excuse me, Lieutenant. You remind me of him. It's more than a man can bear. Oh. The girl I was to marry. They've sent her to a breeding colony. A breeding colony? What is that? Well, the Fuhrer needs more heroes. And my Gratian must serve the Fuhrer. I won't stand for it, I tell you. I'd rather see her dead first. I'd rather die myself. I... Yeah. Yeah, I do it. Get me some paper, something to write with. Yes, sir. A man's honor is all he has left these days. And when that's gone, what is there left to live for? Come 
get behind the bar and help to clean up. Yes, sir. I'm sure Herr Pavel wouldn't mind if we were to dance. Won't you, young? Of course he doesn't mind, Lieutenant. You'll be delighted, Milada, won't you? It was well played, wasn't it? It was too short, Fräulein. And now, if you will excuse us, we have a previous engagement. Good night, Father. Sit down, gentlemen. We're leaving. Oh, but Go downstairs and get glass enough. If that was your idea of being funny, I didn't like it. I only asked if you minded my dancing with him. Of course I did. That's nice to know. Gert, Glasenup has disappeared. What? I looked everywhere and I can't find him. It's impossible. He went downstairs, I saw him myself. There's a door leading to the river. You're the attendant. You saw him down there, didn't you? Well, come on, man, hurry up. Did you see him? That depends, Lieutenant. I saw him, and then on the other hand, I did not see him. What do you mean? I mean, I saw him while I was downstairs, but then when I came upstairs, naturally, I could not see him. How do you see a man who don't see him? Of course, if you put it that way, Lieutenant, I saw him. He was a sad sight. He was, if I may be permitted to say so, Stinking drunk. Bless his heart. All right, all right, stop it! See that no one leaves. Everybody stay where you are! Gestapo headquarters immediately. I'll straighten this out. This is Lieutenant Marshman, 403rd Infantry. I'm speaking from the Cafe Maldavia on the riverfront. A few minutes ago, one of our officers disappeared. Yes. 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 Line up, all of you. Faces to the wall. Evidently, when I introduced myself, Lieutenant, you did recognize the name. Young man, you'll regret this. I'm Otto Preisinger, Director General of the Bohemian Moravian Coal Syndicate. Line up with the others. General Field Marshal Goering is a personal friend of mine. So you're Otto Preisinger, the most powerful man in our country. My name is Janoschek. I'm the washroom attendant. Name? Peter Lobkowitz. Occupation? I used to write books. What do you do now? I think. Name? Julius Prokosch. Occupation? My name is Julius Prokosch. Occupation! Factor. All right, move along. Name? Vladimir Yaroshik. Occupation? Washroom attendant. All right. 26 prisoners, sir. Good. Get going. Captain. I think there's something you should know. When I first went downstairs, I... If you have a report to make, Lieutenant, submit it through the proper channels. Ah, Hitler.
she's upstairs, but it's all right. This is the man from the freight yards. You can give him the message. I haven't got it. What happened? Janashek was picked up at the Moldavian. They took everybody in the cafe. But the message? Mrs. Barkova, will you please call Maria? Aren't you glad you have only two years? I'm very grateful. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Call the strong sticks. Thanks. Good night, Yenda. Good night, Mama. Can I read a while? Five minutes. Mm -hmm. Good night, Granny. Good night, darling. Don't go. Janoshek has been picked up by the Gestapo. Maria, for the last time, keep away from all this trouble. Please, Mother. I know what I'm doing. Why can't you keep out of this while we are still safe? When they take you away, what will happen to Yenda? Think of him now, of his future. I am thinking of it, Mother. I heard. Mother told me. It's only for question. The Nazi officer disappeared. Oh, they don't know Janoshek is Carol Walker. He'll be out in a week. A week? How do we know when the longshoremen plan to blow up their munition barges? Can't you understand? The longshoremen sent Janoshek a message. It was to tell us the exact time to create a diversion for them at the freight yards. In that way, we were to draw the Gestapo away from the waterfront. If we fail, there'll be no way for our men there to know it. They'll go ahead with half a plan. Thirty, forty men, good men, will lose their lives. And the munitions will get through to the Russian front. Why can't we see the longshoremen ourselves? How? Do you know them? Do you? Do I? For every one of our people on the riverfront, there are twenty spies. Janoshik was our only contact with the longshoremen. He was our only contact with us. Somehow we have to get that message from Yanashi. I'll try. Halifa? Halifa, Captain? <laughs> Captain. After last night, I think you'll soon be calling me Major. Yes, sir. There's a report just arrived from the coroner's office on your desk. Fine, fine. Efficiency. Everything moves like clapwood. This poor fellow Glasnab, murdered by these subhuman criminals. Corner's office immediately. This, this is impossible. It, it's unthinkable. Corner's office, Heplom, Captain Schuler speaking. I'm just reading the report. There must be some error. No. No, he was not murdered. There were no marks of violence. Alcohol and water, dead by drowning. My verdict is suicide. Can't be. This means we'll have to release the hostages. Now, that's today. Tomorrow we'll take in some more. You fool, you don't know. One of the prisoners is Otto Preisinger. Captain Schuller's office. Now, wait a minute. Commissioner Reinhardt has arrived. You wanted to speak to him? No, no, no. Uh, cancel the call. I, I've changed my mind. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Oh, what a blunder. What a blunder. This Preisinger will talk. Dr. Schuller's office. Yes. The commissioner wants to speak to you in his office. Schuller? You wish to see me, sir? Yes. 
I have the coroner's report on my desk. Yes, sir. Release those 26 at once. Dismissed. There's something you should know, sir. One of the prisoners downstairs is a big man in this country. He's been cooperating with us. Who is he? When we took him in last night, he... we... Uh, that is, we treated him as we would treat any prisoner. And naturally, when he talked back to our men, they... they answered in an appropriate manner. Will you please answer my question? Who is he? Hello, Preisinger. Director General of the Bohemian Moravian Coal Syndicate. And you treated him as you would any prisoner? But, Commissioner, I had... Really? I have a... Brilliant! Otto Preisinger, one of our leading collaborationists. And you treated him as you would any other prisoner. Brilliant. You know, Schuler, sometimes I think a man of your intelligence might be very useful on the Eastern Front. The protector, General Daluga, wishes to see you at once, sir. Yes. Dismissed. Good morning, General. Good morning, Rand. You are a very efficient Gestapo. Made a stupid blunder last night, huh? I have had quite a few calls about Preisinger. Some very influential people are concerned about his welfare. Yes, a little slip-up. A new man in my department. You know the kind of replacements they are sending us nowadays. However, no real damage has been done. We will release the hostages at once. And then, if you will have a little talk with uh, Preisinger... <laughs> Why should I see him? Well, last night he suffered a... Some slight inconvenience, naturally. But a word from you, the highest authority, would help matters. Why do you want to let Preisinger go? I have been examining the records, the financial statement of his coal syndicate. They have some very handsome investments in the uh, United States and South America. I see nothing to prevent this coal company from continuing to supply the rice just as efficiently from now on, with one slight change. The profits will go to a new management, a German management. As a matter of fact, my brother-in-law would be excellent in the position. Naturally, in the redistribution of the stock, you will be included. Stroke of genius, General. <laughs> uh, uh, but a man of pricing is important, sir. I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Has he not worked with us for two years? Collaboration in itself is an admission of defeat. It's only those who have not yet collaborated who need arouse your fears, Commissioner. This could be turned into fine propaganda, sir. One detail. The coroner reports this glazenup was a suicide. The coroner will make a new examination. It will be murder, a knife stab in the back. Good. <laughs> Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Reinhardt will see me now? Not just now, Herr Preisinger, but until he can, I thought perhaps you'd like to read the paper. Oh, thank you. What's holding up, my release? Herr Preisinger, it will still take a little time. But when your release comes, it will be complete and unconditional. Right. Oh, by the way, last night my man handled you a little carelessly. Oh, this? It's nothing. Believe me, I won't complain. I believe you. <laughs> Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! What did I tell you? What did he tell you? Go 
was inevitable. I told you. I knew this was going to happen. I demand a trial. Hey, let me out of here. This is ridiculous. Impossible. This can't include me. I demand I that they give me a hearing. Quiet! I want to think. Gentlemen, silence. The washroom attendant wants to think. <laughs> now, don't worry, Milara. Five minutes with Reinhardt and we'll have the whole matter cleared up. Please, tell Commissioner Reinhardt I'd like a few minutes of his time. Miss Preisinger's with me. Mr. Klima, publisher of the Park Herald, and Miss Preisinger wish to see Commissioner Reinhardt. No interview. Are oh, you sure you got the name? This, place? Oh, this is impossible. Will this you please call it? Something is wrong. That wrong. Nothing is wrong, Carl. It's the natural stupidity of petty officials. Wait until they receive orders from Berlin. Well, that's just it, Jan. I'm beginning to fear my telegrams never got through to Berlin. Let's wait and see. In other words, let's do nothing. Oh, my dear, don't be unreasonable. We are thinking of everything. No, you're not, and you know it. You have your newspaper. Tell the people what happened. Find out the truth and print it. Yes, and ten minutes later, he'd be in the cell next to your father. Wait a minute. I have an idea. I should have thought of it long ago. Uh, to my office, please. Before we meet this man, I want to warn you. He's no friend of mine. He used to teach languages during the Republic. Now he translates for the German censor, at my expense. Is he a Czech? Yes, quite clever, sly. He's not only close to the lowest officials, but what's more important to us, to the highest, where money counts. Don't be squeamish. No, no, Colonel. In my opinion, you're going to the wrong man. In a case like this, there's only one thing to do. Go right to Mashik, the head of the syndicate. In the meantime, I'll grease the wheels at this end. Now mention it, Colonel Bomber. Someday I may be coming to you for a favor. <laughs> right. Goodbye, Colonel. Hello, Breda. Milana, this is Mr. Breda. Miss Preisinger, Mr. Powell. You know, of course, what happened to Miss Preisinger's father. Yes. Well, talk to him, Jan. Explain everything. See me later, my dear. Sit down, Miss Preisinger. Thank you. You're not really worried about this, are you, Miss Preisinger? Of course she's worried about it. Did you see Reinhardt, the police commissioner? Now look here, if Reinhardt had been willing to see us, do you suppose we'd be here talking to you? This is a complicated affair. People never come to me when it's easy, which is lucky for me. Mr. Breda, there's just one thing we want to know. Can you be of any assistance? That all depends. Naturally, Mr. Breda, we don't expect your services for nothing. You know, Breda, Deep down, these Nazis are no different than we are. I'm sure there must be someone who'd find it worth his while to release Mr. Preisinger for, shall we say, uh, a quarter of a million crowns? Is that all he's worth to you? We'll pay anything. Within reason. We'll pay anything. Good. That may help. The first thing we have to do is see Reinhardt. I've already told you he refused to see us. Get Gestapo headquarters. Tell Commissioner Reinhardt that I'm on my way over. But Herr Reinhardt, how on earth could a man of pricing his importance become involved in the murder of this officer? Importance? Our justice makes no distinction between Herr Preisinger and the lowliest washroom attendant. It isn't his importance. It's his innocence. There can't be any doubt about that. That remains to be seen. And now, if you will excuse me, You're not going. You've taken in 26 people. You've sentenced them to death without a trial. They have no right to defend themselves, no chance to prove their innocence. A moment ago, you mentioned justice. I don't understand your use of the word. I'm afraid we are being too serious about this. After all, a generous reward has been offered. 
I'm sure it will induce someone to turn in the murderer. When that is done, the hostages will be released. Thank you for coming in. Why did you bring them here? I already refused to see them. In the first place, for this. And in the second place, I thought you'd be amused by the proposition they had to make. <laughs> you sly dog. How much did they offer? What do you think? Half a million? <laughs> Let go a million, maybe more. What did you tell them? That they didn't have a chance. That nobody can bribe an official of the Third Reich. Then why did you bring them here? Because I have a wonderful idea, Commissioner. You know, there's front-page news in this for you. Propaganda that will have a tremendous effect upon the entire population. Suppose you were to discover that this washroom attendant you mentioned was innocent. If you release him, the story would break in the front page of every newspaper in the world that Herr Reinhardt, Commissioner of Police in Prague, refused a bribe of a million crowns to release Otto Preisinger. Yet, upon proof of innocence, a poor man was released. This would be real proof to people everywhere that your justice is incorruptible. You know, that's not half bad. Half bad? <laughs> it's very good. That's exactly the note we have to strike. Breda, that's an excellent idea. No. No, it won't do. I'm afraid back in Berlin they would interpret it as a sign of weakness. But, Commissioner... We don't release hostages, Breda. Well, I'll think of something else. You've already thought of something else. What? Very nice, too. Good day, Commissioner. There's a girl leaving the reception hall. Mila the pricing here. Have her follow. Yes, sir. A million crowns. Mulash! And see it! Unling! Fire! Mr. Lobkowitz has a good idea. I know a man once who had such a bad toothache, his wife had to take him to the dentist. When he saw all the machinery in the office, he started to yell, so they tied him in the chair, howling like a wolf. At last, the dentist said, that's enough. Thank you. You were so busy with your yelling, you didn't even know the tooth is already out. What's the point? Well, if you gentlemen can occupy your minds like my friend did, why, we'll all be dead before we know it. Can't you keep your stupid mouth shut? Hello, Joseph. Hello. Maria, here's a small donation. Well? Have you heard on the radio? The hostages are to be shot tomorrow night. There is only one way to get that message from Janosik. We've got to free all the hostages. Yes, but, but how? Someone must give himself up for the murder of Glazenab. Who? It's very simple, Paul. Already my usefulness is about over. Yesterday, you almost picked me up distributing leaflets. I'm sure to be caught. If not tomorrow, the next day. Besides, I'm the logical one. You remember how they killed my daughter? So there it is. I shall say it was this Glazenab who killed her. In revenge, I stabbed him in the back and threw him in the river. They'll believe a story like that. Suppose they don't. That's where you come in. 
Before your paper goes to press tomorrow morning, Joseph will make a public confession in front of the Herald building. You'll have photographers there, and you will write the story. Once it's printed, the Gestapo will have to release the hostages. You see? Stop worrying, Paul. Everything is good. As a matter of fact, there is only one thing that bothers me. Reisinger will be released. Yes. He'll get his freedom. But I promise you, Josef, he'll pay for it. Where are you going? To say goodbye. I saw them put to bed. Hmm. They're good children. Already your boy is a real chair fighter. He helps the people in many ways. And your little girl, too. They'll both grow strong out of their hate for the enemy. And with that strength, we'll win. Our anger will make the earth tremble. Even you and I at rest will feel the earth rock and will know. Who smile? We'll have peace. This is Jan Pavel. You'll see us. Thank you. We'll be there. Chopik will see us. We have an appointment in 20 minutes. What did he say? Can he really do something? A Mr. Breda to see you, Miss Prasinger. Ask him to come in. I have good news, Miss Prasinger. Your father will be released tomorrow. It's all arranged. Thank you. How much? A quarter of a million crowns tonight. Fine, Breda, fine. But uh, we'll settle the financial end of this after Mr. Pricing has been released. Come now, Mr. Pavel. We're not bargaining for a shipment of coal. It's not a question of bargaining. I know the kind of people you do business with. You know them very well. They're the same ones you do business with. That's beside the point. Jan, this is no time to argue. How do I know he's telling the truth? I'll give you a receipt. For a quarter of a million crowns, I promise to deliver in one piece a coal barrel. If I don't, you can sue me. Mm. I'd like to know a little more about this. How are you going to get him out? That's my problem. It's our problem, too. After all, you're not doing this for nothing. There must be a handsome commission in it for you. That's right. If you want to see that commission, you better tell us more than you have. Well, let's say this. A man is going to give himself up. That's nonsense. Now, if you can't give us any more information, Mr. Breda... Not whether I can't. I won't. Let's not waste any more time. Either you get the money tonight or forget the whole thing. We'll get the money. Oh, Milana, this is fantastic. I won't let you do it. Why, do you have a better plan? Yes, I have. Now look, darling. In 15 minutes, we are going to see Chapek. And he has some very important connections. 
A friend who has a sister-in-law who is very close to the Lug. Friends of friends. Sisters-in-law. I'm supposed to sit still while you are running around after a man who's got a friend, who's got a sister-in-law who knows the Lug. We've been running around that circle for years. Don't you see, Jan, we have to take this chance. You're just throwing the money away. Well, that's it. The money. Always the money. Let's hold on to it. It is the most precious thing in life, isn't it? Please, Milada. Oh, let him hear it. Let everybody hear it. For three years, we've been sacrificing everything. The right to hold our heads up, to look anyone straight in the eye. Every shred of honor. What for? To hold on to the money. Well, we have the money, but no friends. A man like this can laugh at us. And our own people, decent Czechs, hate us. Don't you see, Jan, what has happened to us? We are alone. Completely alone. I'll get you the money, Mr. Breda. Good. Meet me at the Czech Lion Cafe on Moldau Street. Do you know where that is? I can find it. In an hour. <laughs> was so right for it. They would have believed him. He had a personal grudge. Josef is dead. We are wasting time. Let us decide who is to take his place. That's right. Who do you think, Maria? It's a hard choice to make. The man who takes Josef's place must be able to tell a story the Nazis will believe. He must be strong enough not to break down under questioning. And he must be replaceable in his own work. There is only one man who can take Josef's place, and that is Paul Breda. I've made all the arrangements. The photographers will be there before nine o'clock. Paul, Joseph is dead. You will have to take his place. Just coffee, please. Yes, ma'am. I'm waiting for Mr. Breda. Do you know him? No, madam. a very comfortable place, isn't it? Yes. You come here often? I live across the street. The food is good, I suppose, native cooking. I miss my native cooking sometimes. What's back there? A kitchen. You cook? And a washroom. I wash. Oh. Anything else? Why don't you go back and look? I will. 
not their lord. You know, only last month we raided a little toy shop. And in the back, they also had a washroom, but they didn't wash in it. No, they printed leaflets. All right, Breda. He's pressing her. Let's go. Come on. He's pressing her. Telephone Gestapo headquarters. Tell them you are calling for Special Agent Ernst Müller. Tell them to send the patrol car at once. Do as I tell you, or I'll take you in with these underground rats. All right. Get away from the telephone. Move away! Before you decide anything, I want you to know what happened. She was ordered to telephone Gestapo headquarters. It could have meant her life. She could have saved herself by turning us in. But she didn't do it. Of course she didn't do it. Then her father wouldn't have been saved. There's one thing I want to say. You don't trust me. There's no reason why you should. But I trust you. When you killed that Nazi tonight, you killed him for me, too. What you're doing is right. Whatever you do about me, we'll be right, too. We can trust her. Believe me, Mary. When the Gestapo comes for you tomorrow morning, Miss Preisinger, they'll want to know where you were tonight. You'll have to convince them you never left your house. They'll be very persistent. Make up your story and go over it and over it in your mind until you yourself believe it. And then you can never be shaken. Thank you. We believe in people. If we didn't, what would there be to fight for? Goodbye, Paul. You help, not just with money. I want to do anything, no matter what it is. The money I gave you was for them. Yes. All this time they've been fighting with their hands, their bodies. But when you have the money to buy them, there are better weapons. Tell me. About my father. He'll be released. How? All the hostages will be free. What I told Mr. Pavel is true. A man is going to give himself up. He'll make a public confession tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock in front of the Park Hurl building. Why? 
for one of the hostages who means a great deal to us. Do you know the man who is giving himself up? Yes. What is he like? He's just a man. A man who loves life so much that his own means nothing to him. You're all like that. Can I ever really be one of you? Milara, you are one. I'm so glad you believe that. You must help me. I need you now. You will help me. Won't you? I'm leaving tomorrow. When will you be back? That's hard to say. See, Mary. Get to know her. She'll tell you what to do. When will you be back? You're not coming back. should innocent people suffer for his crime. There's one thing I don't understand. The regime cannot exist without collaboration. It can't live without men like you. They need coal, don't they? Who is going to produce it for them? You're the head of the syndicate, Mr. Preisinger. You don't produce the coal. Oh. <laughs> now he knows about the coal industry, too. <laughs> I know more about coal than you. <laughs> yes, I worked in your mines for 12 years, have you? Miners produce the coal, you collect for it. He used to collect for it. And the coal will still be produced. Only from now on, they get both the coal and the profits. How much did you make this year, Mr. Preisinger? They can use it. They can't touch a penny of it. My estate is all in order. <laughs> My will is made out. <laughs> you see, you're wrong, Mr. Lockwitz. They wouldn't dare touch a penny because his will is made out. Oh, you are so brilliant. You're very smart. That's why you are a washroom attendant and not the head of a coal syndicate. I'm not a washroom attendant anymore. And you're not the head of a coal syndicate. We're both hostages. It says so in the paper. Oh, what's the good of talking? It's hopeless. Have you got the pencil, Janusik? I like to write a note. The last time someone asked me for a pencil to write a letter, I get into all this trouble. Wait. Stop reading, everybody. Once more, the washroom attendant has a thought. Yes, I have a thought. It's not because of Glasnap we're going to be killed, Freisinger. It's because of you. those Nazis are. But wait until Glasenow's letter is read by the Colonel General in Berlin. The Axe Man will have some exercises on Reinhardt's neck. <laughs> well, don't you see? That drunken idiot Glasenow committed suicide. And we're going to be killed so that Reinhardt can steal Freisinger's money. But wait until they find Glasenow's suicide letter. <laughs> you! Repeat what you said. What I said? I haven't said anything. You must be mistaken. Quickly. Repeat what you said about that suicide letter. Letter? I didn't even mention a letter. You all heard what I said? 
Did I even mention a letter? Captain, he lies. I heard him. Everybody did. He said Lieutenant Glazenap committed suicide. That he knows of a letter which is being sent to Berlin. That isn't true. I swear it isn't. No. No, I, I, I didn't say anything. I was only making up a story. I don't know anything. Perhaps your memory needs refreshing. No. Get him out of here. No. No, I haven't said anything. Please believe me. What are you looking at me for? If he told the truth, it may free us. If he's lying, he deserves what they'll give him. Your name is Janusz. Yes, Your Honor. Now, before we start, Janusz, I want to impress upon you not to waste any time evading questions. I am much cleverer than you are. No matter what you say, I will know when you are telling the truth and when you are not. So don't try to outsmart me. It is impossible. Yes, Your Honor. You met Lieutenant Glassen up in the washroom, didn't you? Yes, Your Honor. A very nice young man. Now to the point. The letter. Letter? What letter? Captain Schuler heard you mention a letter. Oh, there must be some mistake, Your Honor. How could the captain hear me mention a letter when I don't know anything about a letter? Yet Captain Schuler distinctly heard you. How do you explain that? Oh, that's easy, Your Honor. In the little village where we lived when I was a boy, my father used to ring the church bells. Four times a day for 30 years he rang them. Finally, my mother left him because every night he would nudge her in bed and ask her if she did not hear the bells ringing. You know? I never told my mother, but I used to hear them, too. I think maybe the captain also hears the bells ringing. Give me five minutes with him downstairs, and I'll beat the truth out of him. No, Shula. Not this type. Give him a chair. Make him comfortable. Now, Janosik, you just relax. We are going to be very lenient with you and give you plenty of time. I assure you, you have nothing to fear. All we want is for you to try to recall what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Now, about the suicide letter. Was it a suicide? That's what you said. Oh, no, Your Honor. That's not what I said. That's what the captain said I said. <laughs> well... We won't worry about what the captain said. Let's see what we can remember. Now, suppose we start at the beginning, huh? Your Honor, I have a confession to make. Fine. I owe Lieutenant Glass enough money. You do? Why? Because I am an honest man and he trusted me. As a reward, he gave me ten crowns to mail it. The letter? Ye yes, now I remember. The letter. And did you mail it? No, sir. That nice young man, he arrested me before I could go to the post office. And the letter was addressed to a colonel general in Berlin. What was his name? It was? I didn't know that. Captain Schuler heard you say so. Your Honor, look at my face. I am an honest man. You can kill me, but don't insult me. Such a letter placed in my hands by a poor innocent boy who is now dead. Would I look at the address? He gave me 10 crowns to mail the letter, not to read the address. You know what happens if you read the address? First thing you know, you open the letter and then you read it. In the little village where I came from, we had an old lady who ran the post office. She would steam open every Where am I then? I'm trying to explain, Your Honor. Lieutenant Glasnop came to me and said he was very unhappy. He didn't want to live anymore. He was going to commit suicide. He gave me 10 crowns to keep his secret and mail the letter, but I was called upstairs to wash glasses behind the bar. And there is a letter. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When I went upstairs to wash glasses, and believe me, I wasn't very happy about that either. There was a time when the bartender attended the bar and the washroom attendant 
attended the washroom, the union wouldn't let me wash glasses. But now we have to do everything. I advise you to come to the point. This is the point, Your Honor. When I went up to wash the glasses, I put the letter away very carefully because I had given my word of honor that I would mail it. Where did you put it? Well, that's just it, Your Excellency. It's a strange thing. I have a very orderly mind, a place for everything and everything in its place. But there are so many places to put everything, I don't remember where I did put it. Isn't that stupid? No wonder I'm a washroom attendant. And you left it in the washroom? Where else could it be? I advise you to find that letter and bring it back. If you don't, I will personally see to it that every blood vessel in your body will be broken. Take him to the cafe. Get my car. I'm going to the casino. Good evening, General. Hello, Commissioner. Good evening. Good evening. Send them in. They've just brought in a new consignment from Poland. A cargo. Yes, I've heard about it. Hello. Man up. Hello. Congratulations. It's quite a prize you have got among your hostages. I noticed this just an hour ago. I was amusing myself looking through the records. Don't you know? Uh. One of those men you have, Janoszek. For three years he has been wriggling through our fingers. This Janoszek is Karl Vokos. Well, when you throw out a large enough net, you catch all kinds of fish. Coffee Moldavia. Is there any reason for tears? Yes. You know, Reinhardt, the tears of a young girl make the sword of the earth. Where's the last bitch? Ah, uh, it's just like coming home. You know, Captain, this was a fine place to work. I used to sit in my little chair by the hour and think. Think where you put that letter. Oh! Must you do that, Captain? If you wish me to find the letter, it is necessary for me to think. The medicine cabinet. Be careful of that head, Sonic. You can't get any more of it. I'll rub your nose in it. Dumb head. Oh. I told you before, Captain. Please don't do that. It might make me sick. Search the place everywhere. so that on my way home, I would be sure to mail it. Oh! 
Captain. I ask you not to do that. I told you it would make me sick. Cap! Pardon me, Jim. <laughs> Get him out! Get him out! I ask for good men, and they send me half-wits. I ask for an officer, and they send me the drooling offspring of a cheap Berlin politician. If it is the last thing I do, Shula, I will have you transferred to the Russian front. It's after nine. Where is he? Did Breda at least have the courtesy to tell you what this man would look like? You're sure he was to be at the Herald building, not the end of a rainbow? Or perhaps you're still a bit confused. When you finally came home this morning, your story didn't make much sense. I still believe he'll come. Well, evidently, they don't. He's made a fool of you. Well, he's not going to make a fool out of me. Jan! That's enough. That's enough, Paul. Let the man eat. So you did it again. You're, you're really here. Of course I'm here. What's all the fuss about? If you weren't here, he wouldn't be here either. <laughs> yes, I know. Conrad told me. How did you get out? Are they getting soft? No. No, they're frightened and they're desperate. For years, we never knew where they were going to strike next. Now they don't know where the people are going to strike. But we do. We're blowing up the ammunition barges at 6.30 tonight instead of 7 o'clock. That's the hour set for the execution of the hostages. That will be our answer. That's only one answer. Maria, you'll cover the city with leaflets telling the people that Glazenop's murder was suicide. The 25 innocent Czechs are dying so that Nazis can steal Preisinger's money. Or put that down on paper. Change a word. Goodbye, Paul. Good luck. Goodbye, Maya. Goodbye. 
Show me your papers. Tell him to keep going. Keep going! assignment from the Commissioner of Police. I'm writing a story to prove that all this talk of sabotage on the waterfront is just a lie. Thank you. All right, you. Your papers. Papers? Your identification papers. And stand up. You're talking to a German officer. Oh, oh, oh yes. Y yes, of course, General. You must excuse me. Some people will tell you I'm not very bright. But don't you believe them. Whatever they say, don't you believe them. Even if I tell you the reason why I can't show you my papers. What's that? Why can't you? Answer me! Uh, uh, yes, uh, certainly, Sergeant. Oh. You shouldn't have done that, Sergeant. Where are your papers? Just between you and me. My papers are forgeries. Embassy. What's your name? Carol Bokash. The whole thing is a hoax. He literally stole a quarter of a million. I want him arrested at once. Where did she give him the money? At her house? Oh, he asked her to meet him at the Czech Lion Cafe. It's a little place on Moldau Street. What time did you last see her? Shortly after 8 o'clock. She went directly to meet Breda? As far as I know. You see, with an obvious lie, the whole thing was. Why should any man want to give himself up to release the hostages? I'm afraid, Herr Pavel, you place yourself in a most unenviable position. I? Attempted bribery, capital crime against the state. Not I, Herr Reinhardt. Oh, you don't understand. It was I who tried to stop her. I was against it. That's your story. Hold him for questioning. Commissioner, please let me explain. Commissioner, I swear! Round up Milada Preisinger and bring her here. Pick up Paul Breda. You'll find him at the Prague Herald. Just heard the most wonderful news. Sam Wins confessed. No. Janusik has escaped. Huh? I don't believe it. Not that stupid idiot. That stupid idiot is Karel Vokish. And they had him. They had him here. But he got away. Achtung! A price here? Me, Herr Reinhardt? Yes. Come along. I have some news for you. <laughs> Thanks, sir. I'm afraid you haven't been very comfortable here, Herr Preisinger. Oh, it's nothing, Herr Reinhardt. Nothing. Well, I think your troubles may be over now. I was sure of it, Herr Reinhardt. I never doubted it for a moment. That's what I told them in the older time. My friends, important friends, men who are working day and night to get me out. Yes, they worked very hard, and finally we found a way. Oh. Yes, I think I can tell you that with confidence. Thank you, Herr Reinhardt. Thank you. A great deal depends, however, on your daughter. My daughter? She's upstairs waiting for you. Oh. 
I want you to ask her a few very simple questions. And if she answers them, well, I'll drive you both home. And we'll open a bottle of champagne to celebrate. <laughs> Come, sit down. There's a good chance, Milada. Reinhard assured me I can get out. But you must help me. You must do everything in your power to help me. Of course I will. Tell me what you want me to do, I'll do it. Reinhard's in trouble. He needs our help. They're after someone. They need him so badly, they'll trade my life for his. Last night, one of the hostages escaped. They found out afterwards he was Karen Bokosh, a notorious underground leader. Last night? Reinhard says you know a man named Breda. Do you? Yes. Then he's right. He says Breda can tell him where to find Bokosh. Can he? I don't know. Try to remember. Did Breda ever say anything that would make you suppose he's a member of the underground? No. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You must try to remember everything he's ever said. Reinhard is sure Breda knows. In two hours, they'll be taking me out into the courtyard. They're going to kill me, my God. Remember, it's my life, but there is still time. If the Gestapo can't find out, how can I? But that's just it, Milad. You are a woman, an attractive woman. There are ways for you to worm the truth out of him, ways the Gestapo can't use. Say you will, Milad. Tell me you'll do it. Surely the life of your father means more to you than anything else. I know nothing about Mr. Breda, except that he's a friend of Herr Reinhardt. Take Preisinger back and hold the girl. Get out. 
You'd better talk to her, Reinhardt. We have an agreement. Out. No, no. You're making a mistake. Herr Reinhardt has arranged everything. My daughter is going to find something out for him. Yes? Uh, wait, I see you, sir. Send him in. been very clever. You had me fooled for quite a while. I know the kind of man you are. It is not going to be easy for either of us to get the truth out of you. But I will. You are going to tell me how to get my hands on Vokash. I will keep you alive until you do. I don't know what you're talking about, Commissioner. Come, Miss Preisinger. I don't have to introduce you to each other, do I? You arrived just in time, brother. You too, Fräulein. Before you came in, brother, I had a little talk with Miss Preisinger. She told me that you I were... didn't tell him anything. Thank you. Then you do know something. How can you get out of it? First thing, Slater! Move! There you are! Don't line up! Resist! Long left hat freedom! Don't be afraid! Stay right here! Get out of it, Helen! Get out of it, you fool! They are getting off quite easily. You will soon end with them, both of you. Told me that Wokosh escaped last night. Uh, is this what you call careful work? In every war, 
Every door, every street, people are reading this. It will take no time for the news to reach Berlin. It will cause a great deal of annoyance, Reinhardt. He is seeking collaboration, not antagonism. It was during my absence, sir. Stupid assistant bungled up everything. He's going to be punished. I'm sending him to the Eastern Front. You are not giving orders anymore, Reinhardt. Well, this was your idea. You were the one who wanted Pricing a shot. I wanted to release him the very first day. It was you. Investments in the United States and South America. That's true. That was our little secret. But you know, Reinhardt, once two people know something, it is no longer a secret. affair was a little bit too much for him. Suicide. He died for the Führer and the Reich. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Schuller, you take over, at least for now. See to all details. Yes, sir. What did Reinhardt want you for? I'm from the Prague Daily Herald, sir. Commissioner Reinhardt called me in to witness the executions. Yes, sir, this is Herr Breda. He has worked very closely with our office. Mm -hmm. An unfortunate incident just occurred. It would be of no benefit to the people of Prague should the facts become known. Suppose you make a statement, uh, something like this. After more than two years of distinguished service, Richard Reinhardt, Commissioner of Police, has left Prague for a well-deserved rest in the Fatherland. I'd be very glad to, sir. Thank you. By the way, Breda, you might also mention that I'm taking over Reinhardt's job. Congratulations. That's front page news. I'll send the photographers right over. Fine. Just a minute. What were you doing here, Miss Preisinger? The former commissioner wanted her to see how justly your laws work, equally for the rich and for the poor. Now you know. Yes. Now I know. <laughs> 